today a craft hack video. We are going to turn this inexpensive dollar store Walmart purchased composition book. I spent a buck fifty at Walmart for this. We're going to turn this into an art journal that's going to be full of possibilities. This one is Pen and Gear brand and again I bought these at Walmart. When you're looking at composition books because they come from a variety of places and they are or not all created equally. You want to open it up to the middle and you want to make sure that it is stitched not glued. So if you see that when you open it up to the center and you see some stitching there that's a good thing. If it's glued I've had them fall apart. They can be lined or not lined if you can get them. That doesn't matter. We're going to use it. Also feel the pages. This is fairly smooth and I find that when the pages are very smooth and not rough they tend to take paint and the medium as better than if it was a rougher page. You also want to, if it's really very 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 thin, but when in doubt, buy it. It's a buck. So you can test it out and if it doesn't do what you want it to do, then you can use it for another purpose and really you haven't lost anything. That's what I did with this. I, you know, I thought, oh, the pages are a little thin, but let's see. And I did some sample pages and I'm here to tell you this brand works really well. So test out your brand. Don't just assume that it's not going to work. Why do you want to use a composition book instead of an art journal that you or mixed media papers? Well, cost alone. This costs a buck fifty. An art journal page, the Canson Mixed Media, even at, when you buy one, get one at 50% off, or you can get them at 50% off, you're talking a lot more money. So you might want to not spend the money. Because sometimes when we spend more money on specialty items, then we're afraid to use them. And that really squashes the creative process. We want to not worry about how precious the paper is. We just want to create art. Have fun. You might also not be in a location where you can easily access the fancier art journal pages and books. I've used altered books, recipe binders, I've repurposed and recycled old happy planners and address books. You can even take something that you get in the mail. This came from Amazon. I think you, everybody was on Amazon Prime and the pages are smooth. I put this aside because I'm thinking with a coat of paint and I could turn this into an art journal. Of course this one is not stitched so inexpensive, easily accessible, And for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this in a certain way. I'm still going to be de creating on my Canson Mixed Media pages on the Mixed Media paper. And I'll do different things on that. But in here, uh, my plan is to have this as a journal where I'm going to use up leftover paint. I'm going to use up those bits and bobs of tissue paper and collage papers and things that end up stacking up and you end up collecting and you just never throw them away because they're so precious. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to build up the pages over time and much of it is going to be using leftovers, using the discarded stuff, using the stuff that typically is going to end up in the garbage. Now one other thing before we get 
to filling it up and preparing it to be an art journal. Where the stitching is, we have 100 pages before it and 100 pages after it. Now I'm going to set it up and I'm only going to do one, one side, this side of the page because if it turns into something I like, I want to be, or something I absolutely hate, I want to be able to rip it out. And if I rip a page here, the attached page on the second half is also going to fall out. So my plan is to use the first half of the book as an art journal and the second half of the book as a place to write down things I want to try, ideas for my videos, just a brainstorming area. So this is just actually going to be a journal. This is going to be my playground because I know by the time I add stuff it's going to get very very thick. So in order to prepare this to be an art journal. The first thing I thought about was I need to add some structure, stability to the blank page. So one of the things that I always do is I put on a lot of my pages a coat of white gesso and I even put that on the mixed media pages. One, it adds structure and to the page which I want it to build up this page because they're thin. It also allows you to do certain techniques more easily or more effectively if you have that coat of gesso which basically turns it into a non-porous surface. So we're just I've I've done some pages here to show now I've decided I'm only going to do this side of the page because if I end up with something I like, I can use it as a masterboard and I can rip it out and put it in an art journal or you make an Insta background. So what I'm going to do is put a tape across there just so I don't get anything there. I don't really care, it's the back, but it's just going to make it neater and why not. So I'm putting some gesso. This is just my regular economy gesso. Now I thought one of the ways, fast ways, to gesso a lot of surfaces and a lot of pages, I've used my brayer. So I thought, okay, I'm going to use the brayer. And that works, except because the page is so thin, I found that, of course it's not doing it right now, it wrinkles the page, it, I kept catching it. So what I want to do is just every so often I'm just going to gesso a page. I'm not going to do every page because I found other ways that work and then this allows me, by taping this off, it allows me to, oh. yeah, see here, we're getting wrinkles. And the page is going to buckle. Don't worry about that. Remember, this isn't the perfect art journal. This is, this is, but it's going to allow you to create. And that's what's really important. Now, when I'm doing the gessoing thing, I am doing this fairly deliberately. Okay, so I can put it on with a brayer and if you have a smaller brayer that would work. Taping it off was genius here, that, was, that worked. But at this stage, before if I was going to gesso another page, I have to stop. Now the page gets pretty wet, it's pretty fragile right now. But it dries and it crinkles and it still works. So. Just be careful right now and once it's closed it it pretty much flattens out and I'll show you some pages that I've done earlier. So when you're drawing go from both sides.
Now when you brayer it on, you get a, a bit of texture on there, which I like. So you've supported the paper, you've added a layer, you've made it non-porous so it can do different techniques. Now some people glue pages to two pages together or three pages together to make them thicker so that they have more stability. For me, that is like fingernails on a chalkboard. I don't want to do that. Other people swear by it and they love it. So, so now this is pretty much dry and I can go on to the next page. So we're just going to take that off. I'm going to skip a few pages here and I'm going to gesso another one. So I might just out of session, when you, especially when you start your book, you want to have a few done. Just take some time and doing that, do that. So I'm just going to use a brush and Now I don't mind these lines showing through and I'm going to zoom in here. They still show through because I know I'm going to be stamping and stenciling and doing other things on here. So now again, when you put it with a brush, you're going to get a different bit of texture because the gesso is also going to leave texture. So if you don't have a brayer, you're just going to add the gesso and then you're going to have to stop and dry. So the last way that we can apply gesso is to use a key card, gift card. Now a lot of times I may have leftover gesso. I use gesso pretty much on every page and I use it when I blend paints. So when you're doing it with a key card, the goal isn't to get full coverage. The goal is you're going to put it some places, not all places. Some are going to be thicker than others. There might be blobs. Now what this is going to do, where there is gesso, paint will look, it'll take paint differently than the raw paper. So you're building in some vi instant variation once you colorize this. Now I have one that's already dry, that's ready to go, and we're going to colorize that next. So, and it can, you know, there's blobs here. Now that's going to take longer time. Now I would not close the book until it's dry, which is why right now I'm using a heat tool. But if I was using leftovers, typically I would be doing it on one page and then I can just set it aside and then by the next time I come in, I can just close the book. So I'm just going to dry this and we'll come back. So you can see how the pages are rippling already. And you know what? I love that look. And they are lying flat. These are pages that I've kind of prepared. Now what we wanted to do was test out where we have I scrape gesso. Now this I did earlier to prepare for this just to show you the different effects so you can decide if that is something that you would like to do. So I'm going to put this in just to keep it neat and we're going to pretend that I have leftover paint and here I have purple and blue. Now of course you could deliberately choose colors and put that on as well. So one of the ways that I really like putting paint on a page is using a makeup sponge. I think one of my favorite ways and I blend the paper and I'm just going to put a sheet of paper in here underneath. I blend it on the page and quite often if I use more than one color I also blend in some white gesso 
and that gives you variation in tone. You're going to get some lighter and darker areas. So, and typically I have that on my leftover palette, right at the end of a, doing an art journal page. Now I might just have purple, but I don't want to just put purple on here. Maybe I want to mix colors. So I might pick another color and you, when I put it on here. So there may be some deliberation on that, on your part. So we're just going to get in there. And you can see where their gesso is. It's a little bit lighter. because it has been made into a non-porous surface. I can also go back and with a baby wipe, it will lift because the gesso is basically acting as a resist. So I can just take this before it dries and we're building in, look at all that wonderful texture and pattern, we're getting just by because we've scraped gessoed on the page. Now when you're removing it with the baby wipe, you may want, and look at that patterning. I'm loving that and I didn't do anything but scrape on leftover gesso. If I don't rub it off, that's not required. Now again, this is a very thin paper, so whenever you put more moisture on it, it's going to, especially this one because it hasn't been gessoed, it's going to the page is going to get wet. It is thin paper, so it's not going to stand up as well as a mixed media page. So at this stage, you gotta be a little bit more gentler. There we go we have this wonderful pattern page that is raw. Now, if this was the end, I've used up my leftover paint that I can just take this, set it aside. Now, another way to use up leftover paint is to splatter. You can always use splatters and if you, you don't need much paint. So I have a little bit of the dark purple here and what I'm going to do is just add some water to it and thin it down to make splatter paint. And I'm just going to splatter actually on this page. But when I'm splattering, I might flip through the other pages and say, oh, would the purple splatters look good on this? Yes or no? Would the purple splatters look good on this? So you can put this on an existing page or you can put the next paint on a brand new page. You can break another page. So each page is at a different stage and you can just decide. So now I'm just going to splatter. Now all the techniques and everything that I'm doing here are the same as the ones in my prompt and process cards. But we're mixing up the order. Now once, if I like this, I'm going to do it again, right? Remember, I'm using this book as a playbook, a test, if you will. I just want to be creative. So now, We've got the end of my 
session I'm going I have a little bit of the blue paint so I'm just going to splatter with with it as well and I'm just going to splatter on the same page I'm using up the paint now I would put for sakes of getting rid of the splatter or keeping the splatter contained I would put a page on there and I could do the same with the gesso So now I'm all done. I've used up my leftover paint. I'm going to set this aside and it will dry. I'll close the book and then another time I might add the next layer. Remember, art journaling is all about adding those layers, but here it's kind of an accidental art journal page. It's going to evolve over time without a lot of overthinking, which another way that you can add paint to your journal when you have leftover paint is smooshing and we're going to do that in a, in a minute I just wanted to show you one page where I was smooshing now I put this I smooshed these colors on here without gessoing the page and I just want to call your attention to the bleed through now I'm not doing on this side of the page but it did get on this side so you can still do it but be aware that it is going to bleed through so I would recommend and for myself I'm going to when I do smooshing because I love the look of smooshing and I love what happened here this color combo I'm going to make a point of doing it always when the page is already gessoed or there's a layer of paint, something that's providing a barrier. So that could be acrylic paint. So again, this is when there is leftover paint. I'm kind of, kind of faking the f having leftover paint. So but in reality when I'm doing this, I will have be doing this with leftover paint. And it's great because you do not need a lot of paint. So even those little bits of leftover at the end of an art journal page, when you're done, you can get a piece of acetate. That's This is from packaging. I've just added water and then I'm going to lift it and smoosh on the page. Now, if that's all I have, I have an option of getting more paint that's the right color, that's the same color, and adding more. Or I can just put what, use just what there is and not worry about it. Now, again, I've taped off this barrier. And when I smoosh, I discovered I like when it blends because this is all wet still. So if I'm coming in with another color, and you really don't need lots of paint, when they blend wet on wet, you're going to get a mix of that color and as long as 
you know, and through trial and error, you'll know which ones are going to Now, neon colors, which I've chosen here on this, they're very translucent. So you're not seeing a whole lot of color here. But don't worry, this is simply the base coat. This is just the first layer. You will be adding more layers over time. And you always have the option of adding more paint, even though the goal is to And there we have the smooshing. Now, this technique uses a fair bit of water, so the page will get fragile. So I'm going to dry this. For the sake of the video, if I was doing this with leftover paint, I probably am ending my session in the studio, so I will be moving on. One thing you can do on the back is you can write down neon pink, neon yellow. You could even write down the technique that you did or the layers that you did. And that is a good process. When I started art journaling, that's what I kept track of. And then as it progressed, it was like, Oh, I really like that. So then that was something that I could do, I would deliberately do again. One of the things that I end up with a lot of the time is black paint. I use it pretty much on every page. I, you know, in some way, shape or form, edging, shading. So I want there are lots of ways that you can do that. You can add contrast to various pages using black paint. So let's pretend that I have some black paint left on my page. Well, one of the things you can do with black paint and you can break a page is test out your stencils or even your stamps with the paint and you can put basically you're breaking the page with some interest this is the in the first layer so i have this medieval music stencil and i just am going to stencil on it now i'm having a bit of trouble here let's do this right the size of my stencil is making it awkward, but we'll figure it out. So I'm going to tape this off. There, that's going to work a little bit better. Now the goal isn't necessarily when you're adding marks. This is going to be interest in the background. I don't necessarily plan to stencil the entire stencil here. I want to make some interesting marks. Knowing full well I'm going to add layers. This is the first layer. So you can stencil, use up leftover paint by stenciling it on. And I'm trying to be selective here. I don't want the same part of the stencil every single time.
Now you could do the stenciling with any color paint. For this purpose, I like the black because no matter what color I put on top, it's going to show through. So there, I have stenciled on the page and I like this treble clef, so I'm just going to add another one over here, although my paint got a little sloppy. So there we go. So this is the first time I've put paint through this stencil and I'm liking it. it, it definitely, I like the script. That would look nice on a lot of pages. If you close the book when it's wet, the pages, the paint is going to stick. So you don't want to close it up. So either leave it open, let it dry, or use the heat tool. Extra black paint also add contrast to your pages. You can grab some stamps, apply with the makeup sponge, and use some mark making tools or stamps like that. Typically a, a lot of these stamps I, I, I have out. They're my basic. Adding script to a lot of pages. And again, this I might have out, so I'm going to grab whatever's on my desk, flip through, find a page that I might want to add some things to. I might start another page or not here I'm thinking, I'm going to add this one I stenciled on, but I just want to add some script in there. And you can see how the pages are pretty much completing themselves. Look at that. The beginning of a beautiful vintage page. So black, you can also make dots, you can splatter something if it's closer to the end, splatter with black. So earlier we used the brayer to put on gesso. You can use your brayer, especially if you have it out for another project and you are jelly printing, you could brayer off onto these pages. So I have leftover paint, so I'm going to brayer it. on. One session might be just the one color. In another session I might come and there will be another color that I'm going to add to it. And I have a choice. I can flip and I can say am I going to add it to this or am I going to add it to this. Remember brayering you want to go straight one way or the other. So this was a combination that I know and it's a good base. So I have more of the deep violet. I don't want to waste it so I'm going to flip through and decide where I want to put it. And maybe it's going to be on this page. If I have a blue page here I'm not going to make the next one blue and maybe I'm just going to stencil it on here. Makeup sponge had black on it.
And again, I'm just grabbing the stencils that I have on my desk. As well as the paints. Looking for a page that it can land on, that it can add the next layer. Now, some of these you're going to love when they get done, and some of you're going to go and say, ooh, that was a mistake. And that's okay, because if you don't like it, you just keep adding layers till it gets to the point where you do like it. it at that we're gonna say now this here underneath the first coat the first layer was paint that was scraped on using a key card so again we scraped on gesso with a key card we can scrape on paint with a key card or a palette knife if that's what you prefer so I'm just going to take that off. I don't see a page. I've still got some of that deep violet going on there. So I'm going to go to a new page and I'm going to put it on. So end of this session and I'm just going to the very quick way to get some paint on. Again I'm not worried about or I'm not even trying to make it perfectly covered it's just going to be first layer. Using up that paint. So when you have leftover paint, you can scrape it on, you can brush it on, you can brayer it on, smoosh it on, splatter it on, stencil it on, and use a makeup sponge. What else can we do? What other leftovers can we use to start these pages or add to these pages? On my table, I have three bins where I collect bits and bobs over time of things that I have started to use and that I didn't use. I have a bin of sentiments. I have a bin of focal points, focal images that I can go to pull out and audition on these pages, like this one. This one fits perfectly on this page. You can't see it, but it has that deep violet on top of that turquoise. And I love how that goes together. So I might take it out of the bin and glue it down. I'm just gonna grab what's in the bin, audition it on various pages, and if I like it, I'm going to put it down and be done. Unlike the unused paint, which you need to put it in when the paint is wet, I can see myself going to the bin every couple weeks, looking through it and additioning it on the pages that I already have started. There might be a couple, only a couple pages that I'm going to add to. Maybe there will be more. This way, I will use up those little bits and bobs that are in those bins and get rid of it. As I was saying, 
I had three bins. Sentiments, this is a focal image bin, and then I have one that are various collage papers. Colored coffee filters that just never made it into my storage system. Bits of collage paper, gel prints. Little tiny bits that I've used parts of in other videos. And then again, it didn't make it back into my file folders. When I look at this, I might be inspired with what's to go on a page or to start a new page. I've got tissue papers, bits of napkins that I've used again in other videos and then they go in the bin. Hands up if you have that as well. I've got lots of this napkin so I'm going to start a new page. This is going to give the this page its color story. It's going to start the color story as well as the pattern. I'm just going to glue it down with fluid matte medium But instead of covering it all, I'm just going to rip it up and adhere a few pieces. Remember, this is simply the first layer. So with regard to these bins, now I could, if once I did this video that used this napkin, open up this journal and glue it in right there and then. Or I can see myself more likely putting it into the bin and every once in a while sitting down and going through what's in the bin and seeing if I could use any of it to do another layer on one of these pages. Now these pages might end up as complete art journal pages. Some of them I can see ending up as master boards where I'm going to like it so much I'm going to rip it out and use it as an Insta background or the beginnings of an art journal page, an index card, an ATC, a greeting card. Remember, this is also a journal of possibilities. We're creating possibilities from what would be from leftovers, basically. Now, because this video is getting long, in a minute I am going to speed up the next few pages where I'm going to be taking stuff out of these bins and starting or adding to some existing pages. If you are one of those people who don't have time to art journal, this might be a great activity for you. Grab the bin, set the clock for 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever you have, and apply the next layer put it away. I also have lots of vintage printables that I've used and then I have pieces of and lots of atlas papers and music papers. So I'm going to got a whole pouch full of them. So I'm going to use some of those to again the choice is mine add to an existing page or start a new page. Here I'm starting a new page. I also have some of these Tim Holtz tissue papers. I've got some of my own designer tissue papers that I've created. And lots of times when I've ripped off a piece, I have a little bit left and it sits on my desk for weeks. So now I'm going to open up this book and add it to a page.
The key point here is I am not overthinking this. I'm grabbing what's in the pouch and putting it down. I don't have to worry about where this page is going because I don't know. I am just enjoying the creative process, doing it rather intuitively. Just putting down what looks good. And I am trying to work fairly quickly because when you work quickly, you don't overthink it. And sometimes that's when you get to be more creative. <coughs> if you're writing on the back what you've done, the steps, you'll be able to find your way back. Now, another thing that you can get maximum use out is modeling paste. You have modeling paste. There's some on the stencil. You can <coughs> scrape it off instead of into you know, the garbage, you can scrape it off onto one of these pages. It's going to add some texture. It's going to add some pattern. And when you go to finish this page, you've already got one step done. So it kind of points you in the next direction, much the way that when you break a page, often that gives you the next step or the next step. If you don't like what's down here, that's okay. That just means you're not done yet. Just keep adding layers till you do. Worst case scenario, you don't use the page or you rip it out and or put a coat of gesso on it. Now, as I said, this video is getting long and my book is getting surprisingly full after a relatively short period of time. The time that I videoed with you was just over an hour. And admittedly, I spent a little bit of time ahead of time testing out how things worked on this composition book. But in total, I now have 19, 20 pages that have been started. Now, some of them just have a coat of gesso. Some have one layer. Some have two. And a couple of them even have three layers. Over the next weeks, as I'm doing art journaling, other videos, I will be adding to this book. This book is going to sit on my desk within reach at all times and I can grab it, flip through it when I have leftover paint or leftover modeling paste, leftover tissues, gel prints, and I can flip through it quickly and make a decision about whether I can add it to the page. Or not. As I said, some of these are going to be finished pages. Some are going to end up being master boards. All are going to be a great creative warm-up. I will be doing more with this composition book, and I will have a series, and I will be decorating the cover of this journal. And that will, all those things will be in upcoming videos. <clears throat> so that you know what I'm talking about, I've decided to call this the Making Marvelous series. I found this quote and I love it. It's perfect for this journal. Creativity is making marvelous out of the discarded. That's what we're doing. So go buy yourself a composition book. Gesso a few pages. Start using up all those unused items. And then join me as we both can make marvelous out of the discarded.